Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we are continuing our IMO past problems playlist and in this video we'll be discussing IMO, the third IMO, 1961, which was held in Hungary. In the previous video we discussed problem, four, problem one, which was about solving a system of equations and in this video we'll be discussing problem four, which is about a geometrical inequality. So in fact this is our first time discussing like this type of questions, a geometrical inequality. So we have like an inequality in itself and we have also like it's related to the sides of a triangle. So what are you waiting for? Let's get started. All right, so the problem statement goes as following. So a point P lies inside a triangle ABC. So we have a triangle ABC and we have a point P inside this triangle. Okay, and we've, we have that lines PA, PB, and PC meet sides BC, CA, and AB at points A prime, B prime, C prime, respectively. So, like, it's just we extend like uh, the Cvians, the three Cvians, like AP and BP and CP, to intersect the three sides of triangle at like these points A prime, B prime, and C prime. All right, and we're asked to prove the following. So, like, two things we need to prove here. The first one is the maximum between like these three uh, quantities so like the first one is AP over PA prime BP over PB prime and CP over PC prime the max of these is greater than or equal to 2 and the minimum actually of these like they are the same is less than or equal to 2 so like like one of them is the minimum between them so it must be less than or, or equal to 2 and like the maximum uh, it like, must be greater than or equal to 2. So that's basically what we need to prove. All right, so how can we start with such a problem? Well, of course, since it's a geometric problem, then it makes sense to draw a diagram. So that's the first thing we'll be doing. All right, so like uh, luckily, like this problem statement is really simple. We just need to draw a triangle ABC, first of all. So let's just draw a triangle ABC. All right, so that's our triangle. Uh, let's call it A, B, C. And let's like have our point P right here. All right, so like from the problem statement, we need like just to draw lines AP, BP, and CP to intersect the three sides of triangle. So let's actually draw that in another color. So let's draw AP. BP and CP. All right. So let's now actually call this problem, uh, call this point P. This one then is A prime, B prime, and C prime. And let's take a look. Like, what do we need to prove? So basically, let's take a look here, like at each one of these redshifts. So basically, here we have AP over PA prime. So in fact, it is just like this segment, AP over PA prime. So it's over this segment. So basically, this thing over this thing. And of course, like the other two are this thing over this thing. And then we have this thing over this thing. All right, so like we need to basically discuss these three ratios and find out that the max and the minimum, like uh, one is greater than or equal to two and one is less than or equal to two. But how can we exactly do that? Well. First, take a look here, AP over PA prime. So first of all, you can see that like the points are not basically related to each other. So in fact, like we can just take uh, one, like focus on one point actually, like just for example, A prime and forget about B prime and C prime. Because like after all, we, like the problem is about a maximum. So it's like for, not for example, a sum, like the sum of these ratios, it's just the maximum. So it just picks one. So basically like, uh, first of all, like, uh, it makes sense that uh, like we can assume without loss of generality, for example, that this is greater than this, greater than this. And then like we can just, for example, here the maximum will be this thing, and we need just to show that it's greater than or equal to two. So like this is enough actually. So basically, uh, like, uh, like in my opinion, we must like, uh, first of all, just discuss A prime. So we don't need to think about B prime and C prime. So it makes sense to just draw a diagram with just A prime in it. All right, so let's do that actually. 
All right, so let's forget about P prime and C prime. And basically, we'll just like delete this piece of segment, like here, this segment, and this one as well. All right. So basically, now we just will focus about, we'll just focus on A prime. A prime. All right, so now we have triangle ABC, we have a point P, and we extended AP to meet side BC at A prime, and of course we have PB and PC here. All right, and still we want to discuss the ratio AP over PA prime. So how can we find like AP over PA prime? Like how can we discuss that? Like it seems hard a bit. However, like it turns out that there is like a really cool uh, property or like a, like a really cool theorem that really uh, deals with ratios of this kind, like this thing over this thing, like in really a nice way. So what is this theorem exactly? So in fact, the theorem is basically like, uh, like what, why we consider it useful, because it turns out the ratio of segments into a ratio of areas. So let's actually like, first of all, state the theorem and then uh, like prove it, because like it's not uh, difficult at all to prove it, and then we'll just apply it here. So let's take a look at the, at the theorem. So in fact, like let's just draw it here. So let's assume we have a triangle, A, B, C, and a point here, D, at the sign. So A, B, C, and a point D. All right, so the theorem is like the following. What is the segment B, D over D, C? B, D over D, C. So let's like just write it here, B, D, over DC, it turns out that in fact this ratio BD over DC is the same as the area, the ratio between the area of ABD. So let's assume like let's uh, assume that this is the area of ABD over the area of ABC. So what are we basically doing here? We're turning this like uh, BD over DC the ratio of two segments into a ratio of two areas. So it's the same as the ratio of uh, the area of ABD over the area of ABC. Well, why, why, why is that true? Well, actually it's really simple. All what you need to do is simply to draw this altitude. And of course, like what is the area of ABD? It's simply half of this altitude times BD. And what is the area of ADC? It's also half of the altitude times DC. So like if you just cancel the half of uh, the altitude, you will just get BD over DC. Perfect, so now actually we know how to handle like the ratio of two segments uh, to turn it into a ratio of areas. All right, so first of all, let's erase our theorem now and see why exactly are we turning our problem, like our segments into a ratio of areas. All right, so now if you take a look again, so what is the ratio of AP over PA prime? So how can we apply our theorem here? Well, take a look at this triangle, ACA prime. We have a point P on the side AA prime. So that means that AP over PA prime is simply the area of triangle APC, that one, over the area of triangle PA prime C. So like the area of this thing over the area of this thing. And in fact, like you, you can also apply it on the other triangle. So not just like on the right, what about the left as well? So still you have AP over PA prime. So what about considering tri tri triangle ABA prime? So it's basically like this thing over this thing is also the, uh, the ratio between the area of ABP and uh, BA prime P. So now actually we have like uh, two ratios here, like we can, we can write. So basically, let's write it as the following. Okay, so now we know that AP over PA prime is equal to, first of all, the area of triangle APC over the area of triangle PA prime C. And on the other hand, it's also the same as the area of triangle APB over the area of triangle P A prime B. 
All right. So what does that mean exactly? Well, like why, why, why are areas like much more useful than, than just segments? Well, take a look. Now we know that like this ratio, AP over PA prime, is the area of this thing over this thing, and it's the same as the area of this thing over this thing. Well, what exactly should we pick? Like, should we pick the first relation or the second one? Like, should we pick this ratio or, or this ratio? Well, actually, like, if you know a bit, like, of ratio properties, like, there's a, a really, really nice uh, property that, in fact, uh, makes you use the, bo bo both of them. So, like, using this one and this one. So, what is it exactly? Well, actually, it's just like the following. Let's say you have the following, like, x over y is the same as, like, uh, let's say, a over b. Then, in fact, you can generate another ratio here, which is the sum of the numerators, x plus a, over the sum of the denominators, y plus b. So this is really nice and useful, uh, like, property. And, in fact, like, I will leave it to you to prove it and maybe, like, uh, put your proof on, like, uh, in the comments. But it really, trust me, like, this is really easy and simple, like, to derive it. Okay, so how can we apply this one here? Okay, perfect. So actually, we don't know like what to pick. Should we pick this one or this one? How, how about like pick both of them by using this property? And in fact, like you can see why this is really useful because now we have this area plus this area in the numerator. And what about the denominator? Instead of having like uh, this area plus this, like this area and this area separately, now we have the area of BPC, right? So this is really cool. In fact, if you take a look, now we've eliminated point A prime. So first of all, let's just write it. So now we know that A P over P A prime is basically the ratio of the area of A P C plus the area of A P B divided by the area of this thing plus this thing is simply the area of B P C. B, P, C. All right, this is perfect. Now, actually, like, why are we doing that from the beginning? Like, why, first of all, we turned our problem from segments, from ratio of segments to ratio of areas, and now we apply this property, and now, like, we have something like that. Why, 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 why is that useful? Well, take a look at our point A prime. Well, do you see any A prime here in our, like, final ratio? Take a look, like here we have tri like triangle APC, APC plus APB over APC. Well, actually our point A, uh, like A prime disappeared. So like this is really interesting because usually when you have like a geometry problem and like you are reducing the number of points, then like you are really solving the problem, like you are on the right track. Like not a rule of thumb, but usually this is really uh, like true. All right, so in fact, now we have A prime, B prime, and C prime. So in fact, now we've deleted A prime, B prime, and C prime. And guess what? We just have one point, which is P. But actually, even more, take a look. Like now, actually, we have represented our problem just using these triangles. The, tri the area of APC, area of APB, and area of BPC. So in fact, do you still see this problem as a geometry problem? Like, like is there something special about these three areas? This one, this one, and this one. Actually, I don't see any like cool properties, for example, here. So instead of just dealing with areas, let's just forget that this is a geometry problem. And let's just like represent this area, for example, as x and this area as y, and the whole area of this triangle, P, B, C, as Z. And guess what? Now we can turn our problem into just x, y, and z. And forget that it's even a geometry problem. So now like this is simply, like this thing here, it's simply x plus y over z. And guess what? Now we can just like forget that it's a geometry problem and just turn it into an algebraic inequality, which is really simple to deal with. All right, that's great. Let's now erase our triangle. All right, so now basically we've turned our problem into the following. So now we are given like three positive, like three positive uh, real numbers that are x, y, and z. And we just need to show that, in fact, the following. Uh, 
the max of x plus y over z and the next one is y plus z over x and the last one is z plus uh, x over y is simply greater than or equal to 2 and the same for the minimum like the minimum of these three is less than or equal to 2 all right so how can we deal with this problem well now actually it's really simple because take a look here like how can we decide which, like what which of these is the maximum and which of these is the minimum well actually like you can see from here from here that like these are really symmetric so we can simply uh, assume that without the loss of the, of the generality of the problem that x is greater than y greater than z so it's fine actually to do that so we can assume without the loss of generality like without the loss of generality that x is greater than y greater than z all right how can we decide like which one of these is the maximum and which one of these is the minimum well that's really simple well take a look x plus y has the largest numerator and the smallest denominator meaning that it's the maximum so basically we just need to show that x plus y over z is greater than 2 and guess what like what is the minimum here it's simply this one because it has the smallest numerator and it has the largest denominator so it's basically we just need to show that y plus z over x is less than or equal to 2 well now this is really simple take a look here x plus y x is greater than z y is greater than z x plus y that means that x plus y over z is greater than 2z over z and that's simply 2 and guess what we're done with the first part right perfectly what about this second one well guess what y is less than x less than or equal to x z is less than or equal to x that means that y plus z over x is less than or equal to 2x divided by x and guess what this is just 2 perfect so now this is done as well meaning that we've shown both this one the maximum is greater than or equal to 2 and the minimum is less than or equal to 2 now we can turn this into our same like problem the geometry problem into the areas like the three areas like area a b b a b c and p b c and in fact apply like the same inequality and simply we can just turn back into our problem and show that these two holds and that's basically the imo uh, 1961 problem four all right so as a summary how did we handle this geometrical inequality problem and in fact like we can generalize this like into usually uh, like any geometrical inequality so first of all of course we draw the diagram we try to analyze like what we need to prove like the ratios stuff like that we usually like turn turn it some way like in some way uh, into a ge like a simple algebraic inequality like first of all we need to like forget about the diagram like we need to find a way to forget about the diagram and like just uh, just think of it as an algebraic inequality just like what, what we did here using the like the ratio turning the ratio of segments into a ratio of areas and then applying uh, like uh, one useful trick which was the sum of uh, the numerators over the sum of the denominators and we immediately like forgot about our diagram and just turned our problem from geometry to algebra and basically like the rest was really simple like usually it's not that simple however like here we just uh, needed to order them like x y and z in some order like x great for example without the loss of generality x is greater than y greater than z and that immediately just like was like the rest was really simple all right my friends so that was it for uh, imo 1961 problem one and problem four so like in the next uh, video we'll be discussing like the fourth of course the fourth imo which is 1962 of course we'll start with problem problem one all right so if you my friends enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe to the channel and see you guys in the next video